Let's take a look at the new feature in Dynamics 365 Finance and Supply Chain called Petty Cash. First, we will go to Feature Management and make sure to find the Petty Cash feature right here and enable it. Once that is done, we will need to activate it inside Cash and Bank Management module. Navigate here, Parameters, go to Cash tab and make sure that Enable Petty Cash is set to Yes. On the same form, let's review all the parameters. Here we can define default cash account and default cash posting profile, which we will talk about next. We can also define the rules about the document numbers. Do we allow or reject duplicate document numbers for our cash transactions? Then we also have an ability to define operations limit, which is set to 200. It is set per operation and it's a hard stop and error. We can also say it's either acceptable or generate a soft warning. We can also enable posting on the earlier date. We're going to leave that option set to no. Under dimension section, we can select three different financial dimensions for purpose code, analysis code, and department code. These financial dimension values will be printed on certain cash transactions reports. And we also decided to activate use confirm status. So that will enable an additional status for every cash slip journal. Then we'll navigate to the number sequences and make sure that we have cash reimbursement slips, cash disbursement slips, and cash correction voucher assigned to a number sequence. These number sequences will be used when we generate a journal of a certain type. Let's go back to Cash tab. Let's talk about cash postings. Right click, View Details. In here, we define posting profiles. And if you look at the ledger accounts, we can define our ledger account either for a specific cash account. In this case, we have only one called 1000 Sales Petty Cash or we can define it for all accounts, which I chose to do. And I define the same ledger account for all cash accounts. And now let's review our cash accounts. Let's go back to our main menu and go to the cash and bank, petty cash, cash accounts. In here, we have an existing petty cash account for sales department. As the part of this demo, let's create a brand new account for internal maintenance petty cash. Click on new cash account. Let's call it 2000. The name will be internal maintenance petty cash. This number sequence group would allow us to use different voucher numbers for that specific account. But if this field is blank, then the number sequence defined in the parameters form that we looked at before will be used instead. Now we're going to define the currency and we will enable more currencies. And this would allow it to create petty cash transactions in other currencies than the account in currency. And we would make sure to keep the negative cash set to no. We will not allow our petty cash account go into the negative. Then we will click on the balance limits. And in here we'll define our minimum and the maximum. Change to accounting currency, USD. Let's first define a maximum check type will be a warning so it's not going to stop us it's just going to show us that yellow banner on the top warning us that we are either below the minimum or above the maximum and let's define our maximum amount for our internal maintenance petty cash for five hundred dollars let's do the same thing for the minimum and our minimum will be let's say hundred dollars let's go back we have done setup of the internal maintenance petty cash account to sell them now let's go and create first slip journal. And we get to main menu, click on slip journal. And here we have a list of all the journals. By default, they are filtered to show only the ones that are open. So what I'll do here is I'll click on new to create a new journal. So let me explain why there is only one journal name that is available to us. If we navigate to general ledger module, we see that we have several journal names, but only the journals that have a journal type cache will be displayed in that form. So if you do not see any journal name, make sure that you have created at least one journal name with a type cash. Let's go back. So I will use that petty cash journal name that I have created. What I'll do here is I'll define my financial dimensions. You remember that I'm using department as one of my analytical dimensions. So I will make sure to set it up to service operations because this is petty cash transaction related to internal maintenance. Now let's go and create a new line. You see that account has not been populated. That is because I have not defined a default cash account on the drop down and I see two options. I will select the internal maintenance petty cash account. Under description, you can optionally either select or type in description of transaction. We will make an initial deposit. So the deposit should be a debit on that petty cash account. So let's say I want to make an initial deposit to that petty cash account of $500. When you do that, you see that the document type on the top is updated to cash reimbursement slip. If instead I go and I clear that value and populate a credit 
Edit column, you see that the document type changes to cash disbursement slip. Name change is automatic based on which column debit or credit is populated. And another thing to note is if you make a negative credit, for example, or negative debit, then the document type will change to the correction type. So let's just proceed with creating a journal line for initial deposit of $500. So we're going to debit. We will then select an offset account, say office supplies. Now let's navigate to a new tab that is called cash orders. We see a reason. So let's type in initial deposit. This representative type, we have selection of a worker. If you click on the drop down right here, the worker list is blank, even though I do have employees and workers that are configured in this legal entity. If you look a bit closer, you will see that this is related to Eastern European localization. That is why the list is blank. We can also define a representative as either a vendor, customer, or type in the name of a person. Let's say I'm going to do that right here. Let's go back to our view tab. On the bottom here, we see an order number. This order number will be automatically generated by a number sequence assigned under cash and bank parameters. We can also manually populate it, but make sure that the number that you are using manually is higher than the number that was previously used. Otherwise, you will get an error because we do not allow transactions on the earlier dates. So to avoid those inconsistencies, I will let a number sequence to generate those order numbers for me. Once I'm done editing in this journal, I will click on document approval and we will see this additional optional step of confirm. So I'm saying that I have done editing the journal. It looks good. So now it should be basically sent for either approval or rejection to a corresponding employee. So I will click on the confirm. On the bottom, you'll see that approval status has been changed from none to confirm. From that point on, no changes can be made to the journal. Now, if I click on the document approvals again, I see that I have two options, either approve this journal or reject. Let's go and do the reject. It's going to give me that warning. Do you want to cancel the string? We're going to say yes. Once I've done that, I generated petty cash transaction. Let's go back to our cash accounts, look at our internal maintenance and look at the cash transactions. Right here, I have this transaction with a status of rejected. I see the amount of $500. And if I click on the document, I see the automatically generated order number based on my number sequence. This, of course, did not post to general ledger because the status of it is rejected. If we click on the voucher, there are no voucher transactions. Let's go and create another journal. And this time we will approve it instead of rejecting it. Okay, right here, I have recreated exactly the same journal as exactly the same $500 initial deposit. Now I will quickly go through a confirm step and then I will go to the approve step. So now if I look at the overview, the status of my journal line is approved. Only for the approved journal lines, post button will be available. I'm going to click on post and I'm going to post that initial deposit of $500 to my petty cash account. So the journal has successfully posted. Now, if I go to my cash accounts, select my maintenance, click on cash transactions, I see a second transaction with status of approved $500. In here, I can click on the voucher and see that I have $500 debited to my petty cash account, 110180. That's the one that was defined under cash posting profiles and offset with an offset account of ledger 606300. Also, if I go and check cash balances, I see the amount of $500. Now let's create disbursement. We're going to use the same journal. This time, because this is a disbursement, we will select, for example, we are spending $50 on buying some coffee supplies. So let's say $50. Click on cash order. Type in the reason. Go back to overview. We see document type is cash disbursement based on us populating the credit amount. Also, if we want to push it a bit further, let's say right now we have a balance of $500. If we want to bring it below our minimum of $100, we're going to change the amount of our credit to $450 instead. And if we're going to do the validation, We'll get this warning message right here. Again, this is a warning. It's not a hard stop saying balance will be $50 and that is less than the limit of $100. Let's go and change it to $50 right here. And let's do quick confirmation approval. And now if we want to, for example, reset that status back or none, we can use that reset status. Right now, my status is approved. It's basically the last step before posted. So if I click on reset status, it will revert back to the confirmed status. And if I do one more reset, it will go back to the non status. So you can go basically all the way from non confirmed and approved and back. So let's quickly confirm it again, approve it. And once approved, we can go post. So we have posted that. Let's go to our cash accounts. Let's take a look at transactions. Here's our transaction right here. And it looks very similar, except now we are crediting petty cash 
and then debiting our offset account. We have several periodic functions that are related to the new petty cash feature under periodic. We have cash balance recalculation so that would recalculate balances on our petty cash accounts and we also have this check balance limit to we'll check if any of our petty cash accounts are over or under the specified limits. We also have inquiries. Let's take a look, for example, at cash transactions. So this will show us transactions from all petty cash accounts. And we also have the cash balances. We have two cash accounts and we see balances for each. And what I'll show you here is there is one specific cash report called cash ledger reconciliation. If I run it, I will see any journals that have been either confirmed or approved but not yet posted. So they have not been posted to general ledger yet. And in here we see one transaction for $10 and we see that it shows only the financial dimensions that we have specified under cash and bank parameters. Report right here will be blank if I'll your journals are either in status of none or posted. Now a few things that I did not see and that have been mentioned in the document. Right here, if we scroll down, they're saying that we can generate those transactions either using this slip journal, which we already did, but also we can generate those operations via general journal. So we need to go to general journals, select our general journal, create online lines, and make sure to use the account type petty cash. But I was not able to see this account type. Let's just validate that. Go to general journal. Let's select one of our general journals. And if we go into account type, we see those standard ledger customer vendor project fixed asset and bank, but I do not see petty cash. So I'm curious if you know if I'm missing anything or the feature still needs to be fully developed. And one more thing, if we look at our parameters once more, go to cash and look at these operational amount limits. I expected them to work. Basically, I wanted to post a transaction that was over $200 in my slip journal and expected to see a warning or an error. But apparently this feature right here is only working with Eastern European localizations such as Latvia. Uh, that is all I wanted to show to you today. I hope you found that video useful. Until the next time, take care.